welcome to Rise and Shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stone Up for the Stone Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. It's a wake and bake morning show. It's a wake and bake morning show. It's a wake and bake morning show. Good morning, fellow Earthlings. Podcast number 140 of the Stone Roadie Show. Wake and Bake episode number 23. Action, May 8th, 2024. Man, Gary, you uh, you got Gary Rossington behind you there, Craig. Uh, that, uh, that was a year ago, what, a couple days ago that he died? March 5th. Yeah. March 5th. He died March 5th. Yeah. Hmm. Did you have that, uh, that recording that we weren't going to listen to that, uh, one of these days and see, see what it was that he said. Cause you were a little bit, uh, fried when you were talking to him. <laughs> yeah, I was. That was a year ago. I was I remember. unprepared for that call and yeah, I was buzzing. I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah, well, was an he, interesting he phone call. Yeah, uh, Gary said he it, basically he said the reason he called me was he had heard that uh, I didn't like the fact that I was he uh, he so, uh, he had heard that uh, some people had not liked the fact that I had started doing this podcast, and he said, Craig. It's not me, man. He says, I'm not ashamed of anything that you had to, would have to say about me. He said, actually, I, I like your podcast. I've watched them and I like them. And we, we had a pretty good conversation about the past and stuff and laughed a lot. And yeah, I'll have to bring that out. God, I haven't listened to that for a uh, you know, long time. It was, you know, yeah. well, not a long time. It was Gary called me about... Well, maybe three months before he died, something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's months. what I remember. Yeah, it wasn't it was, long, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard a little bit of it, uh, but it, you just, I'd overheard it on my phone, and uh, it was a, sounded like a pretty good conversation that you had with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was fun, yeah. I talked to Dale. You were, you were saying that you, uh, some guy wanted you to go to the uh, Leonard Skinner concert coming up in Ohio? Yeah, yeah, my 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 new friend. Yeah, yeah, and and I want to mention that too. Last week I was kind of, or whatever it was, I was a little under the weather and kind of annoyed that that guy told me I was pathetic for selling Leonard Skinner stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, I was a little annoyed, and and uh, yeah, I, I heard today someone commented that that I was, I was, me and Gene were doing stuff and, and, and ripping people off for money. And, and the, I, this stone roadie show wasn't doing nothing, but I wasn't doesn't doing nothing, but ripping people off and stuff. And, uh, the person they were telling it to said, no, 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 you got it all wrong, man. Every, every penny that they take in, you know, goes right to those survivors. And, he said, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I think they spend a lot of their own money doing this. He said, I know for a fact Griff does, and I'm, you know, doing those on the road with Griff Martin. He says, I don't know about Craig, but I'm, I know for a fact Griff does, you know. So, yeah, it, this 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 thing's kind of, you know, you, you hear things, you know, but, you know, when you've been around this stuff as long as I have, it's like, you know, musicians, they don't read the newspaper after they play 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 a concert somewhere because you never know what somebody's going to say about them or whatever so they just kind of ignore it so you know there's a you know mental illness is really is really um a problem these days in the united states i was i was, I was watching um a podcast the other day where this guy went down to um africa and he went down to a a, a primitive tribe down there and he was talking to this tribe down there and he was telling this guy that you know some people that back in the united states they they think they're women and they you know they'll try to do have operations and stuff to make themselves women and i want to know what he thought about it and the guy turned and and, and talked to his uh, medicine man you know and the medicine man and the whole tribe is going 
and they were listening to the trans translation and all the tribesmen are going laughing like this guy was crazy like he was like he was crazy and the medicines man said well somebody like that would be insane or mentally ill you know and they were all laughing he goes no seriously there's people in the united states that actually you know are like this and they and he said yeah they're they're mentally ill you know and it's funny i was thinking you know in the 1800s it would have been the the same scenario you know but um but nowadays it's kind of like more or less common and and watching uh joe biden's speech uh last night and he was going uh you know history is watching i'm wondering i'm wondering what history is going to say about us seven uh uh women the uh, men that are now women serving on in the in the government positions and and going and talking to congress like this is all normal you know i wonder what history is going to say about this there uh uh joe <laughs> yeah that whole that whole circus that they had and you know that pelosi and schumer and that maxine waters you couldn't get better looking people to be nemesis on a, on a Batman movie, Schumer <laughs> and Pelosi and Maxine waters. They, they would, they would be perfect nemesis. I don't know correct? who that guy was, but he was, he's not the same, same guy that's been out there stumbling and bumbling around. You know, there was a, there's a radio show here and, and 80%, they had a call in thing. 80% of the people thought that they were going to have, an imposter up there and uh i don't know so i don't know where this guy come from but uh he's not the same guy i see on uh, oh he was he was mumbling he was still yeah they had yeah, him juiced yeah. up i think they gave him a little shot of something <laughs> yeah they yeah, had him all was, juiced uh, up i think he, he, he sounded good but you know the, who's that guy beside behind him was just holding these lips well, like this that, going, that was our speaker of the house because <laughs> they were supposed to behave themselves you know old uh, old smiley over there she was just a grinning and a standing and the clapping and all yeah. the other guys like <laughs> you know kamala kamala our uh, black vice president you know kamala. <laughs> got and then somebody got on grin. there on the news and they said Oh, you know, it was going to be questionable as to how he did, you know, but it looks like he's nailed it. Yeah. All he did was stand up there and lie, you know, just, just lie after lie. He after did good lie. though. He did good lying. I'll have to yeah. give him that. Usually he can't hold the conversation and he, he didn't fall down or nothing. He did, you know, he did, did, did get whoever it was did pretty good. Yeah. Well, you know, even a, <laughs> pulled a it broken. off, you know, acted pretty good. Of course they got trillions of dollars to make him a couple of imposters. So. I was looking for some CG stuff, you know, I was trying to see if I would see some. some oh, that was part of, that was part of his uh, speech. He said he was going to ban, uh, uh, that kind of stuff where people could, uh, act like they were doing so. Yeah. I don't know what they call all that stuff, but yeah. He well, gonna... well, Craig, I think they thought that you were going to be, uh, commenting on it on Facebook because didn't they, uh, they won't let me comment on Facebook. <laughs> They'll let me share a post. Yeah, all all night last night and all day today. Yeah, I I I put in test and now down at the bottom will say we'll let you know when this is ready and it comes up that I wrote so just my name comes up no smiley face and no text. They they you, you know why? Because one thing I noticed in in that whole um, State of the Union is there was a lot of fat people in that room. Oh yeah, I mean, wearing white, yeah. <laughs> a lot of they were all women too, you know. Yeah, they oh, they were figure, you know. They were the abortion yeah. rights people. Yeah. That's what they were in that white for. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of women Democrats up there serving. I think that's part of the reason that government's so screwed up, but 
nothing against women, but you know, I you know, I don't think women should be serving government. <laughs> Not, yeah, know. and then when he started talking about the border, then everybody started raising hell. But you know, he, <laughs> yeah, he's that so woman oblivious. started calling him a liar, and I don't even think he knows what's going on over there in the border. <laughs> anyway, you know, he doesn't know anything about what's going on. He's oh, he's he blamed it all on Trump. Yeah, yeah, my predecessor. <laughs> A predecessor, yeah. He blamed everything on my predecessor. Yeah, and then that Marjorie Green Taylor had on the uh the uh Trump hat and uh <laughs> he, he went over and started talking to her. I don't even think he knew he knew she had it on. <laughs> he probably wanted to smell her or sniff her. Of course, she, she, of course <laughs> Bill was sitting next to a black lady, you know. That's you know, that's uh, yeah. You know, pan, I, I think uh, I think they're pandering a little bit. I don't know. The only thing I want to see is, is and I don't know nothing about black people if they're people, you know. But uh, a lot of them ain't. You know, the only thing only thing I want to see is Trump and Biden debating. That's the only thing. Oh, I want that to see. ain't never gonna happen. Yeah, yeah ain't never gonna happen. But uh, yes, yeah, hey, because, but anyways, though, I did I did get out of the house uh, yesterday. I'm still in my robe. I I did just get up you know <laughs> again did, did you go uh, did you go down to the mailbox yeah 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 um yeah uh rusty rusty errington yeah rusty sent in 25 bucks for one of them stickers so we'll send you out a sticker rusty yeah i gotta yeah be, all you pro all of you are probably wondering where my dang sticker is well the last week I've been in bed, you know, after I fell off that wagon on my face. So that's been my excuse this week, but I don't have an excuse for the other two. So <laughs> speaking of which, when we were talking about that, you were wanting to do that, that song, that nasty song. <laughs> and then a couple people guys, want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. They want to hear it now. So, so you have to go ahead and perform it. it I fucking hate you. It. Cause you're a whore. That's a good <laughs> song. Yeah. <laughs> but Chris, Chris Eldridge. Yeah. He sent in another 50 bucks, man. He sent in, um, he sends in and sends them in to me through PayPal. So he sent 175 in on this trip, and he sent in 110 last time. So, hey, hey, uh, uh, Chris, I'm gonna send you like, I know you you well, you ordered about seven of them stickers, so I'm gonna send you an extra one, eight. I'm gonna send you eight of those stickers. Well, no, you didn't order that many, but I'm gonna send you that many because he's a real good guitar player, man. He's got a lot of guitar cases and stuff. He can, oh yeah, he can, yeah, he can stick them on. Yeah, he's he's a professional musician, uh, or what used to be, but he's still really good. Yeah, he he'll have to do something for us on the on the morning on the uh, Sunday morning show. I'm, I'm sure he's got some acoustic stuff. Yeah, we, yeah, speaking so Chris, of Chris, if yeah. you got something, let's, let's hear it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't Here gotten anybody got. send anything in for the, uh, Sunday morning acoustic. Well, uh, got Grady. Yeah. Grady's supposed to be put inside that, that 15 year old Grady. Ain't yeah. He's an electric person. guitar player. Yeah. He's supposed to be doing something. Yeah. I think he may have sent me a video tonight. I'll have to go take a look at it, but I was kind of messing around with my boat today uh, or yesterday, uh, last night, bad company two Oh, Oh, two Oh, Oh, yeah. T O O two Oh, instead of yeah, two, he's, two, two, two. Yeah. Like also. also bad company also <laughs> yeah. yeah but grady's got a friend too i haven't been able to find any of his stuff though yeah what's that kid's name that uh, i don't know I'm, I'm not sure I mean, yeah he's, yeah, yeah. They, there, there's a, a lot of kids out there that are picking up guitar really man well, and they, yeah and they're playing skinner stuff too it's really cool to, to, and i think one of those kids are, has been going to zach and zach's been training him zach's kind of helping those kids along from what i understand you know he's what better person to learn from you know yeah yeah and you know and yeah. he he uh he even showed me a few things which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey hey um uh, i i wanted to as i was talking about um history is watching you know um well well, well joe he did say that uh 
you know, he thought teachers deserved a raise, and I'm kind of with him on that that one. Man, these heathens that we send these teachers, man, that most of these kids ain't got dads and stuff. Yeah, these heathens that we send to school. Uh, yeah. And, they, and what were you telling me about the uh, the the kids were licking peanut butter off each other? Yeah, feet? in Colorado, this yeah history is watching. They got teacher had kids licking peanut butter out out from under beneath the, these other kids' toes in, in school. Had them doing that for some something. Yeah, that's uh, they're yeah. Except for teachers like that, they don't deserve a raise. I guess the that's good a lip tar teacher, fine, but. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, my stepdaughter's a, a teacher, and uh, yeah, there's there's some. Uh, there's I didn't some even girls. know you. The other day, you mentioned something about that. That's where you got your robe from your stepdaughter, and I didn't even know you had a stepdaughter. I got three stepdaughters. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got three of them. Do they ever come <laughs> see you? No, no, no. Well, <laughs> just. Don't feel bad. I got one stepdaughter, and I don't know what happened. To they her, all so. got families, and they got their own thing, you know. They don't, yeah, you know. And when you get old, you kind of get pushed aside. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're all like all women. They just used me and abused me, and now them now they discard. <laughs> and that's me. why you write songs about them and call yeah. them whores. <laughs> And that's why you can never get too many friends, right, Craig? You're, you're yeah, saying, yeah. You know. I get, I get. You know what? I do. I get friends. God, every, every all the time, I get new friends, man. You know? Oh yeah, I was talking. I, I, yeah. As you're mentioning it, yeah, that guy, that my friend that called me. Uh, what her, Skinner's playing here, um, August eighth, playing about ten miles from here, and him and them and ZZ Top, I guess go. Skinner's going to headline one night and ZZ's going to headline on the other and want to know if I wanted to go. And I, I kind of went, no, nah. I said, no, nah, my other friend, him and his wife is going to go, you know, but uh, I'm not going to go. I said, it's kind of funny that, that, you know, they don't call him kind of invite me to go, you know, not that, not that, you know, I'd, you know, I'd want to go and, you know, be a spectacle or anything, but, uh, you know, I got all these tribute tribute band Leonard Skinner tribute bands that are area tribute bands. God, they beg me to come to these shows and and come up on stage and introduce them and stuff. And not that I'd want to do anything like that with the. Well, didn't you get like the last time you were working a Skinner show? They tried to kick you out of there. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, the manager did. Uh, yeah, the manager he. Yeah, I was back back by the trucks in the loading dock, and he seen me back there, and he went up to my uh, union store, and they said he wanted me to go send me home. And the guy said, why? He said, you know, and he didn't really have a reason. He just didn't want me there. And he goes, well, he's not here to see you or the band. He's here to work, and I'm not sending him home. Kind of pissed him off, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, the guy's hated me ever since. You know, he he's hated everybody that was closer to Gary than he was. He got rid of everybody. I was the last one he could get rid of. You know, of course, I was supposed to be the one that was never going to be fired ever. But uh, so if you, you know, you I had I had hepatitis, so it was it was uh, you know I couldn't I was I couldn't work anymore. And then I got home and I didn't want to go back. You know, <laughs> and so. we. We but Le about. little Lily, yeah, little Lily, little Leon Wilkerson Jr. Yeah, he went to a show and pay had to pay to get in, and and then got backstage, and then the same guy threw him out. You know, so uh, yeah, I remember yeah, it's, um, Chad it's kind of a me. weird situation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, I, I do remember you saying that the last time you saw those guys or something, you were you were running through the bus peeing. <laughs> <laughs> no that was when i was working that's that's kind of the straw that drove brought drove, broke the camel's back yeah i was eating them pills that uh yeah gary gary had hepatitis at the same time i did and he was he was eating those damn pills and uh and uh he said he fell and uh fell and hit something i don't know i them pills never did that to me but uh 
Yeah, I was eating them, eating those pills. Them pills made me crazy. The interferon pills, them things. Oh, made, yeah. Or the yeah. shots. Yeah, it was the shots, the sh interferon shots. That's what it was. Them things made me crazy, man. And uh, just wild. Just Especially just, when you. But I was things. drinking. I was yeah. drinking. And I was hiding that I was drinking and on the bus. And I woke up and had to pee. And I going up the hallway. I didn't want to piss myself. So I just pulled it out. And was, <laughs> <laughs> trying to make it in the bathroom before I started pissing and it didn't quite work and I was trying to kind of piss in every place. <laughs> but I'm not ashamed of it. I'm sure Ozzy's done it. Or <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, so, you know. You know, what the hell, man? Yeah. I was I mean, having fun. <laughs> well, it got embellished. I think uh, somebody was saying that you peed on Johnny and Gary. And... Oh God, I wasn't even on Johnny's. <laughs> you bus. weren't even on that bus, were you? No, I didn't pee on anybody. <laughs> That's the way I heard it. I peed all over the curtains and I think, all. The floor. I think it was Chad, your son, told me. Yeah, you know, he, oh, he, yeah. he peed on Johnny and he peed on <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, stories are going to get embellished. God, all those stories are about Ronnie and all that stuff. They all they all happened, but they're they they weren't quite as uh, as embellished as uh, yeah. Even Leslie uh, Hawkins, Leslie Hawkins was telling me when uh, Ronnie was going to throw uh, Joe off the plane, it wasn't quite as as bad as everybody said it was. You know, he was more controlled than then you know he i don't think he i think he was dragging him towards the door it wasn't like he had his hand on the on the uh lever trying to pull the door open Do you remember that <laughs> oh i remember the whole thing yeah <laughs> dean came to me and said craig what happened to my bar i said well joe tore the wing tore the wheels off of it and and uh left it at the loading dock you know and uh it was just a wooden bar and it was you know really wasn't roadworthy but yeah joe kind of tore the wheels off of it and uh, left it left it at the place and it was like 500 dollars or something like that i don't know and dean went and told ronnie that what joe did and, and uh, ronnie called for joe and 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 said something to Joe, and whatever Joe said to Ronnie, he didn't like it much. <laughs> <laughs> so he commenced to beating Joe's ass and bit a hole in his stomach. And yeah, he done. showed me the scar on his stomach. <laughs> yeah, he bit a he hole goes, in his stomach. He goes, you want to see a souvenir? And he flipped his shirt up, and it was a big divot. looked like a piranha nailed him in the stomach. Yeah, that Ronnie did that, yeah. <laughs> And then he acted like he was going to throw him out of the plane, but he wasn't going to throw him out of the plane. I, I, he, I, for some reason, man, he did stuff, and he knew that 50 years from now, people were going to be talking about it, and damned if he wasn't right, man. Did, didn't he make the plane land, and, and Joe had to get Oh, we made, <laughs> we made the <laughs> We just said, man, better land this thing before he throws him <laughs> off the plane. We just well, all went along with that, whatever Ronnie was doing. We just kind of went along with so, it. So know. poor Joe just had it out in the middle of nowhere, had to take a bus home. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, they just opened the door and threw him off, threw him off the plane. But, but you know what, though? It was the best thing that ever happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he'd have been on the plane when it crashed, he all he would have got was hurt and wouldn't got no money so yeah. yeah he wouldn't have got any money that's for sure no, just, all, yeah just, he just he just saved a, 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 a you know getting 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 um uh, getting disabled you know handicapped joe yeah, yeah. You, you saved yourself from not we're, being hand, from having not being handicapped for the rest of your life and having to pay your own medical bills because you got screwed <laughs> yeah, well, he he actually uh, went on to become a, a successful banker. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Barnes is who we're talking about. I did interview <laughs> with Joe Barnes when we were at Whitey's on Gary's uh, celebration of life, which was a year ago. And uh, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly if anybody year, wants yeah. to see that, go back and uh, and uh, <clears throat> listen to the uh, Joe Barnes interview at Whitey's, and he. 
I tried to talk to him about that getting thrown off the plane thing. And he don't want any part of that, man. I mean, I talked, <laughs> I talked to him, but he wouldn't let me interview him about it. Uh, he said, he said, no, I, we, we're not talking about that, which, which, uh, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. Nicest, nicest liberal guy. I think I've ever met, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, some, some of the liberals, I just don't think they understand that might be him, but it was really <laughs> nice of him to come to the Polk theater, uh, and get up on stage. We had a good time when he got up on stage there, didn't we, Craig? Oh yeah. 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 Matter of fact, I, I can't never forget when Ed King, Joe was trying to lay some of his liberal stuff on Ed King and Ed, Ed said, Joe. You're part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> was that on Facebook? <laughs> I don't remember where it yeah. was. He just said, Joe, you're part of the problem. Because <laughs> Ed, he would get on Facebook. And I remember I had gone through quite a few surgeries at the time. And he was going through some surgeries, too. And and I would get on there like 2 o'clock in the morning and talk to him. And, uh, and it was just getting good. But I think he started getting sick right around that time and is when he started failing but i did get to uh i did get to ask him um was uh ronnie the only one that wanted him in the band and he told me yes that when it came down to them accepting him and they didn't really even want ed to come into the only ronnie was the one that wanted him in so it was a good thing uh good thing ronnie got him in there because i think he was a huge part of leonard skinner and then you yes he sure right was there. yeah you, you would wouldn't be have been there. for him there would be no sweet home alabama my god that's that's the gospel song of the south man sweet home yeah. alabama that's the gospel sound song of the south my god and there and there really wouldn't be a steve Gaines. yeah yeah everything played out the way it was supposed to no oh, yeah yeah so god bless ed king one of my favorites, I have to say. Ed King is my uh, one of my but favorites. But poor dang Steve, man. He only had got to live the life he wanted to live for about a year after, you know. So I don't know if that was a good thing for him or not. You know, you know, if, if Steve would have, if even the Steve or Ronnie would have would have survived, the band would have lived on. But you know, especially Ronnie, but Steve too. You never know what Steve would have done, but. Uh, yeah, it uh, took them both, man. Yeah, that, speaking uh, of that, too, you know, Kent Griffith, and we got Kent Griffith, the final episode of Kent Griffith at the tail end of this, Craig. But uh, he and Ed King were bitter enemies, Kent Griffith and Ed King. Oh, and, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if <laughs> Kent wanted me to say that or not. Sorry, Kent. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he told me all kinds of stuff that they they were always arguing about everything, so. I don't know what happened, but, uh, yeah, you know, he was along the same lines of when he was talking about what Gary said when, when Ed had a, a whole briefcase full of slim gems and things and he was selling it <laughs> and he said, yeah, yeah. He was stingy with his drugs, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> but, but, uh, but a hell of a guitar player. We have to admit, you know, all those famous licks that everybody, uh, tries to copy and oh ed king and his brother jim i used to talk to him quite a bit and uh, i don't know what happened to him i haven't seen him on facebook of course who knows uh i was off of there for a couple years but uh but yeah that uh jim king if you're around man send me a send me a note let me know how you're doing i don't think uh Jim was a big uh, favorite in some of these certain circles of the family of Ed King either, but who knows? There's a lot of that <laughs> Leonard Skinner people don't get along. <laughs> That's what, speaking of that, somebody uh, wanted Artemis to come on. Do you hear any more about that, Craig? No, no. I, I'm uh, going to maybe try to pursue that, get Artemis on, you know? Yeah, you think Bet so? That up to him, you know? Well, uh, you know, like if, if you can't get a hold of him, I know somebody that knows him and, but I think you, if you call him, no, I'm, I've got a, I got a hold of, uh, someone that, you know, put the word out to him. It's, uh, yeah. 
So he'll probably get a hold of me and say what's up, you know. Yeah, so you guys so. cross your fingers because there could be a chance that, you know, maybe it's probably a 50-50. I just, you know what, I don't like that personally ask these people to do it, you know. I just don't right. like do that. So mm -hmm. somebody contacted me and I just kind of mentioned it to them and they just kind of try, kind of try to mention it to, to Artemis and we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, if I had the phone numbers of some of these people, I would call them and ask them to come on, but I don't have their phone numbers. Yeah. Like Ted Nugent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to get Ted on. That'd be a hoot. I actually think Ted would come on. I, believe I think he would, would too. Yeah. I kind of know Ted. I've talked to him a couple of times and, you know. But, Did, uh, it's, um, Somebody uh, mentioned something, I think, about uh, Oliver Anthony and Kid Rock getting together. Didn't you? Yeah. Say you yeah. Well, they, about yeah, it? they were, yeah. Yeah, they were. Uh, had that some, would be, that would be a, a pretty good they, thing. They were Kid boycotting, Rock. they were boycotting something in New York City, I think was what it was. There was a lot of people that were boycotting something that was going on in, the, in New York City. Yeah, because uh, well, crap going on. There. I I wouldn't want to plan anything this year. Like you know, you say that Skinnerd concert's coming to Ohio. Who knows? Yeah, by August, that time, oh yeah, we'll, by we'll that be time, under, we'll be who under knows? attack by flying saucers. By then, <laughs> who knows? They're gonna pull out everything. They're gonna throw the kitchen sink at this one. Yeah, yeah. It cracked me up when they were talk. He was talking about that. He he wanted to. He wanted to have free, uh, uh, honest and free, fair elections from now. On. Yeah, he wants to give the, uh, the new the newcomers. He calls them newcomers, the illegal aliens, free interest loans. Yeah, a home. They, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, illegal aliens. They're going to let it, they got they got a bill for illegal aliens to buy a house for zero interest. Yeah. And they also but have, only for illegal aliens. Yeah. yeah and, and they Zero also have made strong. illegal aliens police officers in Los Angeles, but they have to check their gun and they can't take their gun home because they're not citizens. <laughs> I heard something about that. Yeah. Too. His, history is watching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, oh yeah, boy. And, and, and we're, you know, they closed, they closed down the insane asylums. Oh my God. How many years ago? And they're, and they're just all running around in the streets. It's, um, and it shows, I mean, my God, that people are. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, just like the way things are going, everybody with the, the green and purple hair and the man bun and the licking the peanut butter off everybody's toes and, uh, it's just uh, it's getting a little bit too crazy for me. I'm, I'm well, gonna have well, to... even a dog, even a dog knows the difference between a male and a female. I mean, you know, it just seems like the more intelligent people get, the more common sense they lose. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of wanting to you become know, an Amish. <laughs> you know, that they call those people down there in the jungle stupid. You know, those people live off of nothing. You know, they 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 have to build a fire to survive and stuff, man. They're not stupid. You know, wait wait till wait till the shit hits the fan. You'll see who's stupid. You know, when the shit hits the fan, we're gonna find out who's stupid. You know. <laughs> Well, they've been having gay yeah. folk from, you, you remember that movie with Dustin Hoffman, little big man, and, <laughs> and he was an Indian and they had a gay Indian. So <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Little big man with Dustin Hoffman. There was a gay, <laughs> and he loved Dustin Hoffman and uh, that was a good movie. But, uh, yeah, there's always been, there's always been some weird stuff going on all the way back into the Roman times. They, had, oh they were God, doing yeah, some crazy stuff been. then, you know? Yeah. So but that was the end of the Roman empire. And it's like the end of that's what's happening now. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's about all I got to, to written down to talk about Craig, unless you got something else there. Uh, no, I'm um, a little bit more about the, the upcoming uh, drawing. 
You got more emails? Oh, God, I don't know. I'm swamped with that drawing. I got to send out all these stickers. Heck, I still got to send out Lisa's funeral brochure. I got to send out... God, I still got to send Mark Frank his $1,000 and send out Leslie her stuff. And How about I got our it stone down. Did, did, our stone at? Did she get her coin yet? No, not yet. I just... <laughs> I got you know uh, she hasn't told me how she wants the document yet you know I'm, Shelby you, know. you need to tell Craig how you want that document yeah that's, yeah that's, yeah that's yeah and he'll send you your coin I'm real I'm real picky about them documents because that's them are something's people especially my signature on them documents because it's you know it's, it's cause people hang them up on their wall and uh, and uh, you know I want you know I'm look like you know somebody knew how to write when they wrote their signature. Yeah, you have some pretty good ones. You have some uh, letters of authenticity. Yeah, yeah, I got some pretty cool letters of authenticity. Yeah, people have, I man, people send me all the time, sending me pictures of their letter of authenticity hanging on the wall with a bunch of stuff. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it says Survivor crazy. Films on it, right? Yeah, it yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gave me yeah, one. It's crazy. Those, like, something that you gave me. You know? Like I said, that call me, guy called me pathetic for selling things that are uh, uh, that are uh, atoned to the plane crash. But God, every day people uh, uh, emailing me, begging me to sell them a, a Alan Collins guitar pick or Steve Gaines guitar pick or anything I got to belong to Ronnie or Alan. Or my God. It's crazy yeah, that well, Leonard Skinner pair, uh, memorabilia just sells for that's what's funny that that razors and more you know um that called me pathetic for selling plane crash stuff it's not the first time i've seen that name they've bid on my stuff before you know they've well, actually you know, he, they've he, actually bid on my stuff before i've 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 been, I remember seeing razors and more i remember seeing that did any of the other bidders were they able to see the comment no, no, they just sent it to me. Yeah, they just, yeah. Oh. But then when I called, uh, when I wrote them and said, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about this on the Stone Roadie show. So here's three questions for them, and they didn't want no part of my questions, you know. You know yeah, so. I, I don't understand why anybody would not want to help somebody raise money for plane crash survivors. That, that just kind of it just has me. Well, the. Uh, that well, the one thing that they said, uh, I was pathetic for selling stuff that related to the plane crash. And both, the, I have, uh, uh, both of the things I got listed, neither one of them had anything to do with the plane crash. One of them was from the Hell House stuff that was, a, that was something I was selling for you. And, uh, and the other thing was a, th uh, a thing from uh, Cousin Figel. And it's a, uh, it's that's up this this week. It's a, um, um, a Hank Williams um, senior um, uh, newspaper article that was. It's about been in a frame for like seventy years. It's from Hatch Publishing, and and our, our disciple Dave. He said those Hatch Publishing things, those are uh, highly sought after. So it comes. Um, is, is it up when now? That thing close, closes. I'm, I, I, I might, I'm, I'm going to bid on it myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's only going for like 52 bucks or something like that. And that last I looked, yeah. I'm going to bid at least a hundred on it. <laughs> but even if it were a plane crash thing, I mean, it's, you were on the plane. So I think you have a right to do whatever you want. If, well, if you, you know, there plane, was a, there was a time when I when I when I got fired from the band and I didn't really have anything to do and I was sick and I had hospital bills out the butt from that hepatitis uh, that I had to uh, supplement my income with some stuff I had to you know from memorabilia I actually sold some stuff to kind of survive during that period some memorabilia stuff. Kind of like all the I'm, other. I'm past survivors. that now, but now people know I have stuff. They, you know, they want to buy stuff. I you know, and I, I don't, I don't sell them anything privately. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to set prices for my stuff. 
So I put it on eBay and, and people bid on it, you know, and they pay what they want to pay. And I'm, I don't have anything to do with it, you know? So, uh, yeah. All right, Craig, let's wrap it up, man. And let's take a look at, uh, at the, uh, conclusion right. of Kent Griffith on the road. And we're going to wrap that up and then we're, uh, we'll have some more Griff Martin on the road stuff in the future, but. I'm going to take a little break for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to bed, man. I still don't feel good. I I feel better. I'm, I've been down all week. I must have had something besides just falling off that wagon it, on my face. No, something After you we did it, that man. last podcast, when I was trying to, you sent it back to me and I had to edit it. Oh, I, I got sick. I didn't throw up, but I started sweating. I was, I was, pour, I was pouring off of me. I had to go and lay down. I was it was pouring off of me. Well, you, you know, Craig, was, when you get when you get over seventy, you can't go on a on a binge, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's funny. You're not. You're not. I you're, talk you're about not, people that are mentally mentally ill, and here I am, seventy three years old, <laughs> <laughs> drinking drinking uh, uh, Crown Royal and, and tequila, and going yeehaw. <laughs> yeah, and, and right. You know, an alcoholic is, is always an alcoholic. You never, you never, you're never. But you, you, you have been doing a lot better though. I mean, oh no, I, that's right. the first yeah. time I had drank in a while. But you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an extremist, man. I don't, you know, I, you got I that right. I don't do something <laughs> half-ass. I, man, I'm, I'm full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> pedal to the metal buddy hang on here i come <laughs> all right this has been podcast 140 of the stone roadie show with your host craig reed and your co-host griff martin and until what's this what is monday yeah on monday Join us for Wake and Bake number 2324. Oh, yeah. Cut. All right, man. I'll send it right back to you. All you right. That was a pretty out. good one. Yeah, I think it was. See, you can <laughs> make shit up. <laughs> bye bye. So uh, here we are at the Altamont Mall, and this is a parking lot right here. And this is basically where they did the Altamont signing, right. right here in this parking lot. They had tents set up, and it's a parking lot now. But uh, it was a parking lot then. Yeah, and uh, I guess they uh, they closed it down and put the tents in here. So right here's where where uh, Ronnie Van Zant signed uh that uh it was a photo i guess for bobby sanders right That's correct. and uh it was the last known autograph from ronnie van zant um that was done right here in this parking lot so the band came up to in two limousines from um lakeland hotel they drove right up i4 and they got off at the altamont springs 436 exit drove right down 436 probably came in that main entrance right over there and then came around to the back side of the tent, which would have been, you know, somewhere in this area here. They were doing radio interviews outside the back side of that tent. And then they would go through the back wall or door of the tent and there would be a table and they're waiting on band members to sign things for fans that were all lined up out here outside the mall. Richard said he was inside that mall right there working in a music store, a record store of some kind. He heard Skinner was out here in the parking lot so he grabbed his camera and a roll of black and white film, came out those doors and walked out here and took that roll of film and the rest is history, man. Cool. All right, not much to see other than parked cars in here, but a lot of history. Leonard Skinner, 1977, uh, I believe it was October this, 18th. This is some of 17th. the last sacred Florida ground and earth that the feet of Leonard Skinner touched alive. They never came back to touch Florida again. Yeah. You know, this, this is some of the last places that they saw when they were alive right here. Now, kind of a cool story that goes with this. After this event, um, one limousine took some band members and went back down I-4 and back down to the hotel, but Ronnie Van Zant, 
Alan Collins, Gary Rossington, possibly Artemis Pyle and some others took another limousine and they took off and went that way. They went down to Winter Park. They went to East West Records and Tapes down in Winter Park, Florida. They walked in there. Fans were in there and you know they had a bin of Skinner Records and the, the posters on the wall. When these band members walked in, the owner of the store allowed the band members to pull albums out of the bin, open them up, sign them, and give them to the fans that were there, including posters off the wall and records out of the bin. And they let them do that. They didn't say a word about it. The band members were just pulling albums out and signing them and giving cool. them away. That's know? a little piece of, and, um, of uh, information I never knew about. Mm -hmm. Well, there's actually a published story that I have somewhere. I have to dig it out, man. But I've got a story about this that tells a lot of that, you know. But, uh, yeah, they went to East West Record and Tapes before they went back to um, Lakeland. Okay, here we are, the Altamont Mall. And this is where uh, the last place that they had a signing was. It was right here. Bobby Sanders. Cool. Okay, you're live, Kent. Griff, I'd like to introduce you to Jeff Bowman. Um, a lot of people don't really think about the behind the scenes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. In order for musicians to keep performing and sound good, you know, I mean, you got to have technical crew. Right. You know, and in Jacksonville, there was an old, reliable technical crew. You know, technical mm -hmm. people, a very specific crew, you know. And one of the, the stores that was opened up, it was called Hoyt Stereo, that was opened up in the old Roosevelt Mall there in 17 in the west side of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And Hoyt Stereo mostly sold record albums, you know, and whatnot, but they also had an electronics repair shop in the back, okay? I believe it was, am I right, in the back? Mm -hmm. And, um... This is the place that band members would go to, you know, for music and for um, getting their stuff fixed. You know, it wasn't just their guitar amplifiers, you know, I mean, we're talking their car stereos, their home stereos, you know, that, that type of thing. You know? Right, I mean, yeah. And TVs, you know, the works, you know, and they had to have a place to go. So there was a, a, a backbone of technical people in Jacksonville, you know. Gotcha. And Hoyt Stereo in the West Side was one of those places. It was very popular with all the bands. I mean, it wasn't just Skinner, you know. I mean, when I go in there, there's all Molly Hatchet album covers all over the wall. I mean, every band, and you know, all of them were going there. Alan's JBLs, his home speakers that he listened to his music on mm -hmm. in his house, those JBLs were bought at Hoyt Stereo. They're now sitting at the Jacksonville Historical Center. I got Leon's set of JBLs that were identical to Alan's, you know, that Leon listened to his music in his house with they also were purchased at Hoyt Stereo yeah yeah well, let's then, go ahead and get him I'm gonna run out of battery so let's let's go ahead and get started uh, Jeff how, how did you get started in electronics uh, I played in a band when I was young yeah and, uh, well I wouldn't really call it I played at guitar but we couldn't afford to get equipment fixed so I started fixing it Right, and so... I went in the Army and I took electronics. Were you, were you born and raised in Jacksonville? No. I was, no? Uh, I fluctuated between Maryland and Massachusetts. So how old were you, would you say, when you ended up in Jacksonville? Oh, uh, probably early 20s. Early 20s, and what was your first job that you had as far as electronics? Was that at the, at the place that he's talking about? Uh, yeah. Wait Pretty scary. much? Yeah, I, I also did some electronics when I was in Maryland too before I moved down here. Yeah, so your uh, ties to bands and things like that, and rock and roll. What would you say was the first uh, the first time you cut your teeth on some of that stuff? Well, when I was in the army, uh, I was stationed in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Yeah. And the college there, at, um, I can't even remember the name of the town, but. A lot of bands used to play there at the college. Right. There was also a little bar just on the outside of the, near the uh, auditorium for the college. Mm -hmm. And all of the bands that, practiced, that went there, would, after practice, would go to the bar. So we used to go to the bar and meet the bands. Oh, cool. So what took you to Jacksonville? Uh, actually, cold weather. Cold weather? You yeah, got tired of the cold weather? I tired of the cold and my parents had already moved down here and I decided... So uh, what um, What year would you say that was? That 1980. You, 1980? And in 1980, of course, that's already after the Leonard Skinner plane crash, but 
you uh, evidently ran into a lot of those guys that were in the band. What was the first, one of the first guys you ran into? Uh, <laughs> Leon. Yeah, Leon Wilkerson. He came uh, when I was working at uh, Stereo Specialist. Uh, he came in and. I wrote up a ticket for him, and I spelled his name wrong. He was. Oh uh, yeah. What well, did did you? How'd you spell it? I don't remember now. I I probably couldn't spell it correctly today. You know, Lee his son, completely spells it differently than his name, and and I think I asked him about that, and I think he said that they butcher it so much that he just goes ahead and spells it that way. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. So. I think it was a northern spelling. <laughs> uh huh. Like that idea. So as far as your, your recollection or your memory of Leon, um, you, you, of course, you knew who he was yeah, when, was when you met friend. him. Um, you guys, when you first met, were you kind of like pinching yourself going, damn, this is Leon Wilkinson right here? I didn't, I didn't know the name. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. I just, you know. I you didn't know he was Skinner's bass player? Nope. And when did you figure that out? Uh, after Eddie told me. Oh, okay. <laughs> And what was you doing for him was when like, he came in I there? I was, yeah, I was, were you working? You were working on his amps and things. Yes. And what what kind of amp did he have that you were working on? Do you recall? No, I don't. It's too long ago. It was it was home stereo equipment at that time. So did he kind of like turn you on to other guys? That uh, who's the next guy that you'd no, say Eddie, you? Eddie was the main one because he he ran sound for Thirty Eight Special for fifteen years. Yeah. He went in the Navy. And they got their first record contract. Oh, okay. So when he got out of the Navy, he opened Stereo Specialist, and that's where I started working at there probably about 82. Now, Griff, I used to drive Leon's Porsche over to the back door of Stereo Specialist when we needed to work on his Alpine car stereo. You know, so I would take it to Jeff and the guys over there to yeah. fix that. Because Leon was all the time getting tapes eaten up because of sticky stuff. Leon, the inside of his car was very sticky. Uh -huh. It had a particular smell to it. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. It's hard on the electronics, was it? Yeah, you know. Sometimes. The actually found that's... some inside of it once in a while. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, we're fixing the Alpine. So I was driving his car, his Porsche was there to get it worked on. So what was uh, like a, uh, a normal day hanging around that Hoyt shop over there where you worked? Uh, I was on the, always in the back, so yeah. I was just working on equipment. Were there like a lot of uh, big name people popping in there? And they, that would happen. Yeah. Definitely. Who who would we who would we expect to see? Just name some people that you could. The only actually remember. the only one I remember at one time was one of the coaches from mm. uh, you know Florida, and I. Yeah, foot, football coach, but uh, other names, I'm terrible with names. But, I mean, as far as, like, uh, band members Bands. and rock stars and things like that. Miscellaneous, it popped in once in a while, but again, like I said, I was in the back, so I didn't really see much of it. But you had uh, um, uh, Leon coming in, Alan was coming in, right? Is Alan doing some stuff there? Yeah, but not that I would have known. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff was not. You know, they they would be on the other side of the counter. Either. Right. Yeah. It was. It wasn't just. It was a separate little room that I was in in the back. So they would. Have, they wouldn't have come back there. Now, some of the things that Jeff has done. Um, before Alan died, uh, me and Jeff went into Alan Collins' house, and his home stereo was in complete disarray. There was nothing functional in there whatsoever. So mm -hmm. I was pulling pieces out of there. Um, the cassette deck, the Sony cassette deck was not working yet. I took Jeff there over to Alan's house, into Alan's house. Jeff actually got the JBLs that Alan had in his den. He couldn't, listen, they need to be reconed, need a new foam around them and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Jeff actually re was the one that reconed those speakers for Alan. And then he died and Larkin didn't want to pick them up. And he, you know, Larkin said, if you pay for the repair bill, you can have them. So this was after Alan's accident? Well, yeah. before first... Alan died, he got the speakers, okay? Uh -huh. After Alan died, there was no reason for Larkin to come back and get those speakers that weren't finished yet. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So Larkin just abandoned them in Jeff's shop, and I basically paid the repair bill, and I walked away with Alan Collins, you know, home speakers. 
you know, free and clear. And um, I got Leon's from Artemis a little while later. It, identical sets, almost identical sets of JBLs, you know, but we were trying to fix Alan's home system because he was now paralyzed, you know. Right. And um, he and I were trying to fix it so that Alan could, you know, sit in his living room, in his den, with remote controls and have something to watch and listen to. You know, because that's so what... So, was Alan there when you were there, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah? Do you remember a conversation that you had with him at all? Uh, I remember him asking us to go with him, both Ken and I, uh, on both occasions of his car wrecks. Oh, really? Yeah. And he had something to do, and I had something else to do. So we never went. Or oh. we'd have been right in there with him. Good thing you didn't go, huh? Uh, yeah. So what was it like when you went in there? You, you, that's when you first met Alan, is it? The first time you met him? You remember, you remember uh, the first conversation you had with him or anything like that? Well, basically, it was about his equipment that I had with yeah. him. He was he wanted to get it working so he could have some sound? Was he pretty personable with you? Was he? Oh yeah, he's pretty a great cool. Guy. Yeah. What What was he doing? Just kind of hanging around there and just uh, watching TV? Or well, Alan, Alan obviously he only got in his wheelchair whenever he needed to move around, but he preferred he, he got rid of the sofa and he bought two lazy boys that he put in there. Uh -huh. Big, comfy, kickback lazy boys is what he you know sat in a den most of the time was most comfortable with. Um, I remember when we were there one time, Alan was in that wheelchair and he took off out the back door and um, he took off out through the yard and we followed him out to the three car garage out behind his house and that's when he went to dig them JBLs out back there because they weren't in the house anymore. The only thing he had in the house was these little tiny Marantz speakers with blown tweeters and I remember putting in some um, piezo tweeters so you could turn up as loud as you want without blowing them but at least he had some speakers in there to listen to, you know. Didn't have a tape deck yet. I checked out his Luxman amplifier, which also probably came from Hoyt Stereo. Um, I don't remember what his tuner preamp was, you know. Um, I'm sure I got it written down somewhere. This had to be kind of like late at night because he was no, a rock no. star. During huh? the day. He was During the day. Well, so I know, but he was still on that because Steve no. Reynolds told me he was kind of like still a night owl. Maybe he was, but we were there during the you day. He wasn't, during the day. He wasn't, yeah. you know. It was um, later in the day. But he. Right. Yeah. yeah. In the afternoon sometime. That, that was when he was just, he was planning on going out that night. And but that's he, when he asked us if we wanted to go with him. So he, you collected that stuff up and then ne he never got it back. How he, long ago after that was it that he died? Months, I guess. Months? Yeah, a couple months. Yeah, a couple so, months. so you were working on that stuff while, uh, while he was waiting what, on what it? What shop was that in? That was Jerry's that, shop. That was the text area. Text area. You were reconing the speakers? We, no, we rebuilt them. Rebuilt them. That was complete. Well, everything that moves in the speakers replaced. Were you still in touch with him, like in telling him what kind of progress you had going on him or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, he. I pretty much got approval from him to do it, and then we found out he he passed away. Yeah. yeah. And Larkin didn't. You know, he had no need to go get them speakers. He didn't want them. Right. You know, so what, what eventually happened to him? I gave him to the Jacksonville Historical Society. I tried auctioning him at the Freebird Foundation, you know, uh -huh. um, to raise money, but fans didn't want to pay what they were worth, you know, and um, so we didn't sell them. And um, both Leon's and Alan set are right now at the Jacksonville Historical Society. So how did you end up over here, living in uh, this area? Oh, down here? Yeah. I brought him down here. You, you brought him over it's, here? Uh, his parents, I helped his parents move to where I'm staying at right now. Uh -huh. And I rented his house, his parents' house up in Jacksonville, With, so he could finish school. Yeah. Okay. So you've been here ever since? He, he taught me late, basically everything I knew about speakers and amplifiers. He's the one that taught me the power of dynamics, you know, and, oh, cool, and cool. How, to, how to really make things loud. So you uh, miss Jacksonville <laughs> at all? I always liked Jacksonville. but Do you go back there ever? Yeah, with him once in a while. Yeah. That's not any place I'm going back to move or anything. He, he, we had a job, a couple of job opportunities down here, and I asked Jeff if he wanted to get out of Jacksonville, you know, and maybe find a future down here. So we both started working for a guy named Craig Osborne out of Longwood at a shop called Frontline Car Stereo. And we had this guy coming around that did mobile car audio, a guy named Lewis. And um, 
Lewis eventually opened his own shop in Winter Parts called, you know, All Car Stereos, where he fixes. I mean, Jeff works there to this day, fixing electronics down there. And uh, Lewis bought my condo. Okay. Yeah, so Do you ever work on any of those uh, PV May amps? No, I haven't. No, but you just got through. I've been. I'm, I'm in the middle of. You still in now. the middle of that one? Well, we reached the transformer, the output transformer, and I haven't gone any further than that with it. It's just, it's just been put aside. Yeah, I'm, I'm always in the. In Jacksonville, I mainly did high-end home stereo equipment. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember that guy. Is it David Hayes? Um, you know that guy? He had a car stereo place. I believe his name was David Hayes. Um, and he tells some stories about uh, uh, Leon coming in there and then and Alan coming in there. And I think he told me a story about he was working on Alan's stuff and Alan got <clears throat> pissed off and and ran out of there and Leon had to come in there and pay for it because he was, uh, you know. Any, anything, else that you, anything else you want to say for the podcast as far as uh, your history working with? Uh, I just wanted the fans to meet Jeff Bowman. Yeah. You know, I mean, an old Hoyt stereo technician. Out know, of Jacksonville. Fans. Cool. A lot of people don't know about Hoyt stereo. Okay. All right. Hey, Jeff, appreciate you, man. Uh, thank you. You got anything else you want to say, Kent? All right, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. We appreciate you, Jeff.